Welcome back to Cosmic Company, and then I'm going to show you some um, application on the MakerBot slicer. So um, we're going to show you some comparison of how you actually, well, actually, we'll show you comparison like how it actually works on this one. Um, I noticed that on the Sketch Large, it's a little bit difficult, and I'm going to show you one with the Sketch, um, actually MakerBot Sketch, which is not that bad. I do like that one too as well. So from the previous video, I did review the. Um, the resin printers. I think I'm gonna minimize this guy. So I can transfer to the MakerBot. But on the previous video, I did discuss about the large and the sketch of the comparison, and also I got some feedbacks on the sketch large. Apparently, it wasn't functioning as it should have been, which I didn't actually look over the large itself because I was busy at the time with another um area. So I did look into it, and it's a bit odd on the. MakerBot Cloud Print. MakerBot Cloud Print, I hope you find this video on my side that you guys need to fix the software itself. I don't like it. And it was like a nightmare trying like to see if I can like minimize the materials without wasting materials. The MakerBot Sketch, I like it. I I, I, I love it. So I'm gonna show you that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the comparison. So I'm gonna open up the MakerBot Print. To show you that one i already downloaded a file onto there to just do a test print that's it and i'm gonna mess around with it to see how i can actually make it functional so so uh, i'm gonna go back to this right here so on this right here at the bottom if you have the original makerbot um print on the software if you download it that's great uh if you don't don't worry look at the videos on the previous ones and now you can actually download from there okay now on here i managed to actually put the uh makerbot sketch onto this one right here with with cloud and i do like it too as well that was fantastic i went on here trying to uh, type in the sketch and that way it'll transfer to the sketch to onto here uh you have to do some like calibration onto the settings onto it too as well make sure you have the correct wi-fi but also make sure you have the correct uh internet um uh, connection which is the internet bar number this is okay so sorry it's on this printer it's okay now once you click onto here it'll transfer everything else onto here now on the settings for the MakerBot Sketch, everything else was fantastic. I do love it. It was printing very well from the other uh, videos that I made, which has that one caliper. It did fantastic on the fine details. It did fantastic on the parts. I'm going to show you guys this one right now because of this right here. So I'm going to put my item onto here, this guy, put it on there. Hopefully it's on the correct color filament. That's good. This is the what it looks like on the filament that I do like it. I'm just gonna do like as a prototype. This is a test one to see how it looks like. I hope I can change this one later on in the future. Hopefully it does have the right functioning. Um, and also with the hollow point at the bottom, which says yellow. Now, I hope it says on the right orientation. Yeah, <laughs> just in case. Now, this one, I do like this one because I wanna go to settings, graphs. It should have none on this one right here. And then balance, no, it's okay, it's done. Make a sketch PLA base layers. I thought this one has the the um actually support type. No, there's no support. Where is it? Info density, thickness. Thickness, I want to change about um one one point two maybe. Let's go from there. 222, I want to change it to 225. I like that one, it's a little more uh, hot. And, or actually, I'm going to go up. Intro to that one. Base layer, I thought you guys have the rims or the brims onto it. I don't get that. I'll probably go check out the settings right now. Uh, thickness of the roof, I want to change it to one millimeters. And then layer height, it's okay. Support time's okay. Speed, I do love the speed, it's okay. It was all right. I think I'm going to leave it as 80, so it's okay for me. Um, I know it's gonna be slower, but it did fantastic with the layer adhesive, and also it did very bond. It did bond very well. I'm gonna go to custom settings because I know they have it on brims. I noticed that. Let's see, uh, layer high, infill density, number of shells. It's okay. Printer. Let's see, just be extruder itself. It's okay. Roof shells. Floors. That's weird. Interesting. I thought they have the brims. I I, I like that one. What happened? No, not rats. Come on. 
Internal brims, that's okay. Internal brims. If you guys have brims, please add in the the skirts or the brims on the setup side of it. Come on in. Um actually you can actually import from the settings itself, but I don't know about that one. Huh, that's weird. Last time I printed it has the brims on there. Because that way you don't have to worry about about it like going on here. So but again, I do like it because of this right here. So this one right here, the base layer is alright. Uh hopefully it does print this one right here with the um filament itself. I'm gonna do like the preparation now. Because usually I do like this one with the sketch. It was fantastic. I like it with this printer as well. It generates the exact um, G code of, or how it actually follows itself. So if I go down here, it actually does what it's going to be doing. So like this right here, and actually infill from the bottom. It infills from the edges. So I do love down and rather just go from the inside where it actually prints itself. Now, compared to the other one, which I really don't like. Now, uh, I'm going to print this guy out right now. Uh, it's already been idle. Hope I can just print it out just in case if anything else does happen. Um, oh yeah, how long will it take? It's going to take about three hours, so it's okay. I can print it. Print it. So it's under yellow color. That's okay. Filaments is like about 41 grams. I'm okay. Enough filaments. We're good. Ready. Now that with the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi itself, I'll discuss that later on the afterwards. Now, for the other one, this one. You need a account to create this one. So if you do have a MakerBot account, which is okay, that's great. But if you don't, make sure you create your account on here. Uh, you got to go from here to use Cloud Print, and then it'll transfer to this one right here to actually uh, make your own account. If you don't have a MakerBot account, don't just sign up, log into there. I'm not sure how theirs works, but again, just follow the instructions so that way you can begin your creating your account. But right now, I'm already on the MakerBot brand, so I can actually sign in. Actually, I begin from my journey from there. Okay, now. This is where it gets interesting. So I do love this right here. I love it. I love this where it goes to the IoT system to actually um, use the cloud base. And I do love this one where you actually get more control onto the printer itself. So you have the MakerBot sketch, which is the uh, SM1. Then you have the MakerBot sketch large, which is why I do have a different table, but there's no internet connection. And we have the Replicator Plus One, which I do like down to as well. I actually connect to with the Replicator Plus, so that's great. And I'm just going to select this guy right here. Actually, sorry, set to go. So Arius is already empty. So select this icon. It'll go into this one. It'll queue itself. So this is the ones you'll be using right now. I can go back over here to go to my work, workspace printer. And if I want to check out my details, click onto there. And you know where it's going to be uh, printing. Right now, I got my print history. And... This is where it comes up and it has a lot of cancel because of some issues that I have. There were some two success. That was great. But again, you notice that this one was like, you see my, my issues right here with the printing history. But I'm going to show you why. This is where you get to the next one, which is the print preparation. And now we're at the print preparation. So this one looks familiar. It's the same thing as the MakerBot sketch um, area right here. So this is what it looks right here. Same thing, is, but it converted onto online itself. I can go up here on top on this guy, Replicator 1. Click this one, bring this icon icon down. And I'm going to check, I'm going to click this guy only right here. Uh, the MakerBot large, click it. And it'll automatically transfer everything else on here. So everything else is already set to go on here. That's great. It has the size, it has the height. That's great. PLA, it's already transferred your stuff to as well. Tough, which is very interesting. I'm going to try that later on in the future. Not that bad. But I think that's just like PLA tough. I think that's just like a lot, another one PLA system. Now, this one will be the same thing as well. You can actually click over here and you can actually export your, actually not this one. Uh, you can import your materials right here. Import your file onto this guy right here. So you just click onto there, look for your file, and that's like uh, find your final your part. But another one you can do is just like click this icon, click this uh, STL file that you created. Drag onto here, same thing with the other MakerBot. You can click over here and it'll say copy, drag onto there, and it'll automatically find there. Now, this is where it gets very frustrated and very irritating because usually on this right here in the MakerBot, it can follow the inside there on layer one, which is the exterior of the layer. I like this one right here where it actually extruded that part, and that it'll continue on from the inside. Oh, I think my yellow with the O is like not printed. 
I hope it prints. No, it's on layer four, so hopefully it does okay. Um, but again, this one right here, this is the reason why I don't like it. So um, click on settings. Same thing in everything else is okay. Layer height is all right. Infill density is 15. Number of shells is all right. Breakaway, none. I have nothing else. Raft, I want to say none, but here's the issues that I have with this one right here. My uh, settings down here, printer, uh, travel speed, I want to change it to about, uh, same thing as this side, 80. And then platform temperature, it's okay, I love the platform, that was great. Extruder, 210, I want to do about 222, same thing. Retraction is okay, I'm not worried about that one. Roofs, I think I make, let's go make about 0 0.6 then. Like the roof, zero, I'll make it a millimeter. Shells is okay too. I'm not gonna worry about that. Infills, floors, support bridges. This is the one that's okay. It's like supports, but this one has breakaway. Base layer. On the MakerBot Sketch Large, I don't get that too well. Of MakerBot Sketch, I noticed that it did have a rim because that way it doesn't have the issues right away. But this one, it doesn't have rim too as well, which I'm okay with it. At least it doesn't waste the materials. But when I try to do a preview of it, this is where it gets ridiculous on the items. And also, too, I'm going to um, put my input on the arrays. I like the printer on this side where it actually does a lot of arrays on one side where you got to add multiple items in there. And now you have a free arrange of areas. Like, for example, this right here, I'm going to uh, exit out right there. So this one, I can actually add in, like multiple items on this side. And I have no issues with that one, too, as well. So. Click this one, right click it, duplicate it, one, create. Oops, new build plate, it's okay. I got to put this guy over here. Uh, move the build plate from this side right here. So this guy, I don't have issues. Whoops, there's a little more, but again, you get the idea on my side where I can actually rearrange it on this side as close as possible. I can just eyeball it on this one right here. Just pretend this is like an eyeball. And I can just print these two on here with no issues. That's okay, that's great with me. But with this guy, let's go down all the way to the base of it. It should look like this to actually print from the outside of the brims. But when you go to layer one, it prints only this array in. It was frustrating. That's what happened in my other previous history where it actually failed multiple times with no with no support and it doesn't actually print out the outside of the um exterior the, the brims and it got me really frustrated it got me really angry about it i tried to look at the settings on this one and it was like frustrating to the point like why are they doing that and i on the videos i put um the the, the painter's tape and hot glue glue stick or glue sticks to one um elmer's sticks but it didn't do nothing i even changed the layer height too as well changed the bed height the same thing it would never stick onto there like this one right here on the maker bot itself on the sketch um let me transfer to my pictures on that one my delete sky and this one i do like how it looks like on there and it prints fantastic on a slow speed. It was printing on a build plate very well. I love it. And it actually follows the outline from the outside. Hopefully you can see that. And it prints down very well. From the MakerBot Large on this online software, it doesn't even do that. It prints this guy only, but doesn't print out the outline of itself. And even I tried printing at the slow speed, it still would not bond very well with the tape and the and the sticks. Because of the layer height I did see that one, it wasn't even bonding that very, very close to print out the part. But if I change this guy onto the so-called raft, which got me frustrated, it does okay with the preview. It print out the raft and it prints out very well onto the base plate or it'll print onto the bed itself or the raft will print onto the bed and the part prints onto the raft it did fantastic it's okay 
But if you keep doing this multiple times with the array, you're wasting a lot of filament and you're just wasting the plastic material too as well. Which got me really, really frustrated because you want your clients to be happy with it. You want to print it out with just no issues at all and that Yahweh you can actually print out very well. Even with the raft itself, uh, look at it. It's okay. And I thought it'll print this guy right here. But again, I'm still frustrated about the weight and how much it actually used up. And that's not, that's not good. I don't like it. I really don't understand why they changed it to this platform right here. And on top of this, this is where it gets me frustrated. Where if I put this guy in here, and okay, so this is where it gets to the point right here where you have these arrays. Because I want to print this guy a little closer. If I want to print three of them on here, which I do like it. But it would not allow me to actually print one another. I think it was another video where it shows the caliper that it didn't actually want to arrange itself to do three prints. I want to do three prints onto the uh, print bed, but it would never, it wouldn't allow me because there's a, a so-called uh, eye view onto it, the automatic system. It tells us like, oh, you can't do it this way. I want you, to, I want to do it this way right here or the other way around to actually have it arranged. It doesn't even do that. Come on. I think it was because of the orientation of the other part it didn't actually do what it was supposed to be doing. But again, you get the idea of what I'm saying, talking about, and it was really frustrating right now. So this one right here, it was like a big of a, it was a big issue for my side where it keeps failing every single time, every single now and then. So this I'm gonna put this on the complaint on the. I hope everybody or I hope MakerBot does see this one. Make sure you put a rim on there. Because you have brim on the printer and or onto the settings, and I don't get why you don't have that as a, as a. Oh my goodness, this is getting me frustrated right now. Because you have brims on this settings right here, and I don't get why you don't have brims on the, on the base layer. That's the thing, because if you have brims, that'll be very helpful and that'll be greatly uh, help me out with this printing process. But if you don't have that brims, I don't get that why. You you add that one on there. Does it make sense? Or a skirt, put a skirt on there because that way it won't waste that material and also it won't uh, have these printing issues regularly. And I'll get that too as well. And on top of the two, with the other different models onto it, it doesn't really print very well because it'll it'll interfere with another part. And I don't get that one because of the caliper. It didn't actually make the array of the 3D prints. I had to print them out in individuals, and those are the ones I really got frustrated because it wasted a lot of materials on the on the RAS. So I'm gonna do some more research, which, which I found out that you can actually do it differently because again, I want to do a different area. But I want to look research more of this build plate to see what's the um, X, Y, and Z uh, to know where I'm going to print onto that printer itself. Because again, I want the brims, everything else on the settings to be controlled, rather than just have this AI to actually tell me like. Oh, you can do it this way, but it can't. It can't because it's just got me frustrated to the point. Now, on top of the two, now I waste a lot of filament because it went to 60 um, grams itself. So that was my input on my side. That really got me frustrated. So kind of be careful on your side. But I will do another one next time. Hopefully you guys do like a test print or like this just for now, just to see if you got the, the, the use of it. Now, to print, you go over here, you got to type print. It'll automatically print right here. If you have an assembly line that you want to print later on, click on this side. You got to do it as Q, which is weight. You can export it onto MakerBot file. And you can actually export these ones outside the file, which is USB um, transfer, transfer. But I'm going to transfer it right here, which is the export MakerBot. And that will export it into this MakerBot large. So give it time to let it load. Your loading icon will be on the top right here with this little red one. And it's going to take a while to do everything else, which is the RAF. The material, the time, everything else. Oh, oh, this is the wrong one. Oh, uh, I think I was supposed to cue it. Sorry about that. Cue that one. <laughs> I was supposed to cue it onto the printer. Sorry about that. Jeez, that was my fault. There you go. So now it'll cue onto this MakerBot large. So make sure you go to queue. The first one right here, not the export. <laughs> Sorry about that. That okay. So export was exporting onto the USB drive. I got confused. Okay. Now, once you've gone to Q, it'll go onto there. 
and it's gonna go on to make about large it's gonna take a while too as well because it's like a wi-fi system so mm -hmm. um we gotta take our time in still slicing because it's gonna take a while too as well so and hopefully it'll transfer everything else on that side but again yeah i got frustrated about this punch because it really didn't do very a uh, good job onto it um because there is another way you can put another slicer on to this maker bot uh, i just found out uh, but again i think they're not gonna be happy about it because they're not gonna use this uh, slicer but again if they fix these issues resolve these issues right away I hope they do understand that because of my frustration about it, of how that one software really does its own thing about this uh, layering. Come on. Well, while it's idling itself, I'm going to click over here to the make. All right. We're going to go over here to the left side of the work workspace management. Click that one. And everything else should be slicing itself. So right now, it's still slicing, which is weird. I don't get that. Please wait until process procedure is completed. Okay. Um, come on. It shouldn't take that long to slice. I don't get that. That one did it very well with the um, extruded one, or exported one. I don't get why it's not doing the one with the, the uh, other way around. Oh, they've been tensing this. Really? I'm going to cancel. Hold on. That's weird. I don't get that one. See you, that one. There. That's so weird. Okay, that's that's weird. Okay, once it's ready, I'm going to click this guy right here. And it's going to give us information on this guy on the time. Let's take about four hours. I'm not sure why it's doing that. But again, I think because of the um, there was a material. Uh, this one, settings, wrap. Okay, fine. Materials, okay, note. Okay, I'm going to start printing. Start. And this will automatically transfer this one on the files into the cloud system. So if your large is connected to the internet, you should be connected onto this um, printing area. So you're good to go right now. It should be um, connected right away. So let's go over there to check it out. 